DJ Ron here with Tidy for Club Planet. How are you doing today? I'm very good, thank you. How are you? I'm doing great. You blew my mind last night. That set the clip there was everything. Excellent, thank you. That's my job. I'm, uh, I had a lot of fun actually. That was a really cool show. It was fun to play the rooftop and um, see so many fans who were just really into the music for the emotion as well. It wasn't just about bangers, you know? It was like they, I think I played like a three or four minute Blink 182 kind of remix I did there and people we had their hands in the air. It was beautiful. So amazing. I loved when you got up on the chair in front of the DJ booth and was just jumping up and down. <laughs> you really get into it and crowd feeds off of that. How can I not get into it? This is the, it's the best job in the world. <laughs> Love that. Redefined, amazing record. When you wrote it, what was in your mind? Okay, I wrote it with my friend Melanie Fontana and I have to give her massive credit for this record because um, a lot of the tracks I do, I write, um, the concepts are often very jaded and very dark. Uh, Melanie has just brought in this really positive vibe in Redefined, but um, the idea about the song, the, the, the whole concept is, is it sounds kind of lame when I say it like this, but it's love. It's about, you know, it's about like what one person can do. The lyrics are, it only takes, you know, it only takes one heart to save a life. It only takes one spark to start a fire. It's uh, just lyrically um, kind of clever and simple, and it's just about positivity, and it's a, and it's a hopeful club anthem. You worked with one of my favorite singer-songwriters. You worked with Curly. Curly, yeah, yeah, yeah. What was she like in the studio? She's lovely, and she's so much of an artist. She's um, not only a beautiful girl on the inside and out, but just an incredible songwriter and, and vocalist. Writing with her is really interesting. She's... Um, you know, some writers that I work with, uh, they get on like rhyme zone and they really calculate it and, and that's a great thing. Curly is super, um, she likes to, a little introverted when she writes, you know, she likes to light candles and really like think about, you know, what's this story going to be about and sometimes she runs out of the room when she gets an idea and writes it down on paper, which is brilliant because then she comes back in with a great idea and it fuels what I'm writing and playing and... Yeah, she's a, she, I do not have a bad thing to say about that girl. She's lovely. When you're writing, are you playing piano? Are you on guitar? Um, I start all my songs usually on piano. I play drums and piano, but can't really start on write a song on drums. So I, I originally started my career as a drummer. I wanted to be in a band, and then I heard electronic music and thought, like, this is amazing. It swept me off my feet. I can do this myself. Um, without needing four other band members to be as motivated. When I start songs, I often start on the piano. It, every, I think with my music, the most fundamental thing about my songs is that they're not just beats. They have verses, choruses, they have uh, a bridge, and, and everything about them is about songwriting. You could take any song off my Redefined album and play it on a guitar or on a campfire, you know? That's like, it's, a, it's about, to me, more about songwriting than it is about the club, which is Kind of sound, it kind of might work against me a little bit because, um, you know, club tracks is boom, 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 what boom. a DJ does, just like just slamming club tracks. But um, I can't help who I am and what I love, and I love emotion and music, and I love songwriting and songs that carry something beautiful that people walk away going, like, I, I felt something there, you know? They're the, the feels. <laughs> love that. So you went from being a producer to being a DJ, right? Um, both at the same time. So I once I started realizing I didn't want to be in a band I went to I, I got turntables I started DJing and at the same time I was so passionate about the music I started producing as well so I've been doing that for 10 years now I noticed your last album you did a trance on for charity yeah what motivated that um, you, this is that's a really good question um, it was motivated by haters which is uh, really? yep so I released my album Redefined and I had a lot of haters coming at me because I used to be a really big trance artist, like all about trance. And the people who loved my trance music were saying, you're a sellout, you can't write trance anymore, why don't you write trance music? And I thought, like, I go, I, I, I'm not going to lie, I'm a human being and hate gets to me. Like, you know, I, we do read these comments, the, you can be as Avicii and still read these comments and they do hurt you. And, and, and people were calling me a sellout and they were saying that I can't make trance and so I said okay alright this my response is I'm gonna find the, gonna get this negativity and turn it into something positive so I said I'm gonna make and I did a spiel about it on Facebook first I said I'm, I'm gonna make an EP all trance exactly what you guys are telling me I can't do anymore but you're gonna buy it not pirate it and I'm gonna give every cent to charity 
and that's how it came about. So I, I slaved away in the studio for about a month and whipped this EP up in, I slept probably two hours a night to make this thing. And um, it all goes to uh, help build schools for children in developing company, uh, countries. <laughs> a friend of mine who is a great DJ in Nashville, DJ Remedy, had some questions for you. Yeah. He wants to know, what do you use in the studio and what your favorite VSTs are? Oh, cool. Yeah, um, so all my music is mo mostly done, I, I produce with Logic, Logic Pro. Um, I love hardware, but I'm not much of a hardware guy because I travel so much. I, I do 150 shows a year, so I've really adapted to writing music on a laptop. And um, my favorite VSTs are probably the Valhalla Reverbs and Valhalla Shimmer. They've got some crazy... Um, the, the Shimmer especially has this crazy ability to get, say, a single piano note. You can play like, like a whatever, like a C, and then you apply the Shimmer in the right way, and you can make it just ring out and sound like this like 10 second orchestral kind of just something from a movie score it's a it's a, an amazing plug-in and then if you're a producer you should try it it's great now with the schedule of being on the road 150 days out of the year how do you maintain your health your sanity a healthy lifestyle with that kind of road work uh, you're assuming that i have my health and my sanity <laughs> um uh i would say well i swim i'm a swimmer so every every day i wake up when i'm not touring i swim for about 30 minutes is not that much but um uh, my sanity is long gone I, I, I live for music I, I live and breathe music it's all I do and um I think any any of us artists are a little bit weird I mean I'm definitely not a politician or someone here to uh, sanity is gone so yeah I, I'm a weirdo and if you knew me personally and you might anyone watching this you'd know I'm pretty strange I'm into some weird shit. Have you seen Fifty Shades? At the end of a gig, which hurts more? Your ears from the sound or the eyes from all the phone cameras? Oh, probably the ears from the sound. I, I, I've gotten kind of, um, what's the word? I've gotten a little bit like used to the, the cameras kind of thing, but that's probably because of strobes and lasers as well. When you're in a club environment, just in your face constantly. Um, the sound as well, but the sound lasts longer when you walk out and you're back in the hotel room and everything's deadly quiet. I get the ee. I try to wear earplugs, um, like like you know, to lower the decibel when I play, but um, it often takes away the vibe of the party. So at the really big shows, I, I don't. What advice would you give to new and up and coming producers? Be original. So the the worst thing in dance music right now is is everybody copying everyone else and I'm gonna give a really simple example Avicii drops levels uh, or wake me up right suddenly somebody else comes along and thinks well if I do that then I'm gonna be I'm gonna have the same level of success but it doesn't work like that once a, tr a track breaks and it's known for being original it's been done like you, you're not gonna um, you're not gonna get anywhere by copying people so my best advice is to Find something unique to yourself in your heart that you believe in and that you love and, 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 and follow that path. As, no matter who says no, the amount of times in my career people have told me that the music I write isn't a hit or this won't sell or um, whatever, you know, like uh, all, all the people that try to bring you down because the opinions of others are swayed by the, opin uh, the music that they listen to from other artists, if you let that get to you, it's gonna have an effect on your sound. And I, I've learned the hard way and the long way that the best songs I've ever written and the ones that connect the most with my fans are the ones that everyone told me wouldn't work. So find a sound that's unique and believe in it and stick with it. I'm, I'm saying think about it a little bit, Yeah. but be unique, yeah. Now to turn on yourself, if you go back and talk to yourself at age 18, what advice would you give yourself? Wow, that's a really good question. Probably what you just asked me. If I was talking to my 18-year-old self, I would say, Tyson, you are going to come across major labels, A&Rs, managers. Um, everybody is going to tell you how you should sound and what you should do and what you should wear and what's going to make you awesome. Ignore them. Follow what you believed in from the start because... That is, that is how you will make it. You'll be, be original. So that's what I've learned the, the hard way, and that's what I'd go back and tell myself now. So I would have probably saved five years. <laughs> and so you were on a major label, and now you're independent, right? Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm still uh, published with Universal Music, so um, publishing with a major, and um, 
I was with, with Universal Republic for a while, which is also a major. Now I have my own record label, Global Sound System. Um, there's no negativity in any sense of that, like why these changes have happened. I'm just, I love the ability to be able to release what I want when I want, sign other artists. Um, I'm currently licensing Redefine to a label called Robbins. I, I very much run my own business and um, I have a great team around me. My manager, Alex, is incredible. Um, the guys at Robbins are amazing. My publisher are incredible. They, they, like, you know, I, I truly mean this. So, this is more another good thing. When you said, what would you advise your 18-year-old um, self or your 16 or whatever? Yeah. Surround yourself with passionate, kind, trustworthy people. If you surround yourself with people that are full of love and not negativity, it, you feed off that and it really helps your art. And what would you like to say to all of your fans out there? I would say to every one of my fans, thank you so much for believing in my music. That sounds so cliche, but it is so true because I'm no, I'm no superstar. I'm not standing here being Taylor Swift. It is, <laughs> it, it is extremely difficult to make it as an independent artist. I've tried for 11 years to get where I am today. And um, without every single one of you fans who, who, are, who buy my albums and buy my records and just come to my shows and show love, I would not be standing here right now or anywhere playing these shows. I would be doing something I don't want to do. So thank you so much for believing in my work and, um, and, and making my dream come true. Thank you. I'm DJ Ron. This is Tidy. You're watching on Club Planet. Thank you so much for watching.